The 2025 Chicago Cubs are a very odd team. They lead the league in stolen bases and runs scored. They have the best hitter in baseball entering last weekend. No, I'm not talking about Kyle Tucker. I'm talking about Carson Kelly. Yes, Alan Craig's stance clone, Carson Kelly, who tried emulating Barry Bonds this offseason? Well, it's working. And yet, that's not even what I care about. What I'm interested in is what they're doing with their pitching staff because it goes against something I've continually brought up on this channel, forcing fastball usage. Take a look at this plot. Down here is forcing fastball usage, which increases as you move to the right. Here is forcing velocity, which increases as you go up. This means each of these grid sections represents something. Bottom left here are slow fastballs not thrown a lot. Top right are hard fastballs thrown often. And then we get to the most important section of this graph, slow forcing fastballs thrown a lot, where the Cubs not only live, but are on an island relative to the rest of the league. It's honestly a bit of a head scratcher to me. One of Fangraph's Stuff Plus models suggests they're throwing the fifth worst four seam shapes in MLB. The other model thinks they're mostly average four seamers. I'm not sure it's particularly true that despite the low velocity, these shapes are great in the way we traditionally grade pitches. And to be frank, the low velocity angle isn't particularly new. The Cubs have been bottom 10 in the league on four seam velocity for the last eight seasons. Thanks in part to Kyle Hendricks, but even with his departure, they've always had somewhat of a velocity problem, you could say. This early season usage spike represents a deviation from what they've historically done. And yes, I get Wrigley Field plays weird in terms of the win. There's probably some incentive to just rip forcing fastballs and challenge hitters to crush them. Wrigley's had the most wind deviated balls hit since 2023 by like a lot. The majority of those balls too are deviated in, hurting hitters and helping pitchers. But if you look at league wide forcing usage, it tends to peak a few months into the season. And last year, the Cubs highest month of forcing usage was right in line with that approach. That's a long way for me to say I don't think you could use the environment or the wind as 100% an excuse for the increase in usage. So why? Why use the pitch that the league has buried over the last few seasons? Every single year, we look at forcing fastballs and see that they allow the most barrels, don't generate a lot of swing and miss, and a whole lot more that says don't use them so often. But the Cubs are zigging when the rest of the league has zagged. The most obvious reason is just count leverage. Despite the fact that most four seamers get hammered, they also generate a lot of strikes. I'm always gonna defer to Foolish Bailey and his the only thing that matters in baseball video where the answer, spoiler alert, was the count. 75% of extra base hits last season happened when the batter was ahead or even in the count. Hitters slug about 300 points better when they're ahead in the count compared to when they're behind. Count leverage matters a lot. If it's not the count, then perhaps it's something else, which I admit is out of left field, but what if it has to do with muddying advance reports for the playoffs? I've always thought the Dodgers do this. Every single year, at least for the last few years, they've been basically guaranteed a playoff spot. So why not try to create some diversions, especially against other National League teams, such that when you see them in the playoffs, it's harder for the opponent to predict what the Dodgers are gonna do in terms of usage. And if you think this is absurd, I totally understand. But Greg Maddox talked about how he literally would give up home runs to set up guys come the postseason. It's that, but on an organization level. It's probably not a high probability point, but it's definitely greater than a couple percent. Or put another way, using a ton of four seamers right now gives the Cubs freedom to diverge as the season goes on. It's like this idea in hitting that pulling the ball is good, but if you max out how much you're pulling the ball, what do you do then? Three of the bottom five teams in forcing fastball usage this season represent the where do we go from here idea pretty well. And I think it's in part because they're trying to strangle as much value out of their staff, given they're projected to be some of the worst teams in baseball. This is obvious with the White Sox who've really pushed towards cutters and spent very little on their starting pitching. My last idea here as to why is probably in the middle of our spectrum around the Cubs four seam usage. Even though I'll champion that four seamers get beat pretty often, maybe the Cubs think this is a scarcity thing where the usage of four seamers has been low long enough that they think throwing them more has become a small competitive edge because it's kind of working. Now, this is way too small of a sample to work off and be confident here four weeks into the season, but the Cubs four seamers aren't missing any bats. They have the second lowest whiff rate in the league right now on that pitch. 
but the barrel rate is bottom five in the league as of last weekend. And their ex woba on contact on these four seam shapes is 30 points below the league average. And they've played one of the toughest schedules in baseball to start the year, facing four of the top nine offenses in the league, excluding themselves. They're finding a way to avoid barrels with these four seamers better than you would expect versus teams we traditionally think would do well versus four seam fastballs. A natural question to ask is, are these four seam fastballs different in any way apart from just being slower? And to answer this question, I think you have to go below the major league level. If you were to pull together all four seamers thrown by an organization from class A all the way through triple A, and look at the amount of arm side movement those four seamers get, we're essentially asking how much do you cut your fastball? The Cubs have the lowest amount of arm side movement. They cut their fastballs the most. Now this isn't totally represented in the major leagues as I said, but given the pervasiveness of the idea and the minors for them, it's fair to assume that as an organization they value this on the whole. This four seam shape usually doesn't miss as many bats as a standard carry four seamer, but they do generally have lower barrel rates. And having this shape generally opens up more room for a sinker because these guys are cutting their fastballs. It increases the probability they can hold that supination at high ranges of velocity. I think both of these points, contact neutralizing over whiffs and the benefits to the rest of a pitcher's mix are probably the driving factors to the idea pushing the org in this cut fastball direction. And another thing I find kind of fascinating in all this is that Craig Breslow is now running the Red Sox. He helped reshape the Cubs pitching department, putting a strong emphasis on velocity and shooting the Cubs minor leaguers way up in stuff plus. Breslow is now in an organization alongside Andrew Bailey and the two of them have literally set the record for the lowest amount of fastball usage, combining four seamers and sinkers here, probably in the history of the sport. While the Cubs couldn't be more distinct from that Red Sox philosophy at the major league level. Organizations will always tell you, and I'm not talking specifically about the Cubs here, that they individualize to a given pitcher. It's obvious, and I think it's probably the correct approach. But what I'm focused on here is something called revealed preference. This concept that you showing me what you're doing in the market is a better indication of how you think than you telling me what you're doing. This applies to organizations like the Mariners, who hate forcing fastballs and love low slot arms in the minors, or the Rays, who love to throw everything as hard as possible and in the zone as much as possible. And yeah, that's a pretty common concept for an org to have, but the Rays are doing it better than everybody else. And I think it partially applies to the Cubs in this particular instance. I wonder whether having a more definitive revealed preference causes an org to be susceptible to poaching in some cases. Your org is so trained in one direction that another org might be able to ID and fix an arm that you haven't locked in on. The Cubs have had bullpen problems for each of the last two seasons. Last year, they had a disastrous two months followed by a pretty good run to close out the season. This year has been more of the same with their bullpen missing basically no bats and walking a lot of guys. And if we look at a list of bullpen arms that they had in their org that now look like weapons in other orgs, it's a bit hefty. Jeremiah Strada, Jason Adam, Trevor Miguel, all arms that would immediately be the best reliever on the Cubs right now. And four of the five arms I'm showing here in the year after joining their new organization decreased their primary fastball usage, an indication that the acquiring org had different philosophies than the Cubs. So it becomes kind of an equation for the Cubs. We could critique the bullpen side as much as we want, but they've done a really good job on the starting pitching side, getting value out of guys that I don't think other orgs would have. Justin Steele is a good example of this, even if he just went down with surgery. Javier Assad is another one. This guy seems to be allergic to regression, so much so that it's probably something he's doing with his shapes that's allowing him not to regress. And they've gotten surplus value to guys like Jamison Tyone, made some fastball tweaks there this season. So does the net benefit of their strategy outweigh the downside of occasionally failing to optimize certain relievers? I think the ultimate answer is yes, because the Cubs have been really productive from a starting pitching standpoint. In each of the last four seasons, they've had a top half starting pitcher ERA. They're tracking to have, again, a top half starting pitcher ERA this season. So the strategy on a whole is working. As to other teams adopting this strategy, I kind of think that's unlikely. It seems like a lot of the orgs in baseball are pushing in the anti-fastball direction. But 
The game is cyclical. Everything is cyclical. So it's fascinating to consider whether the Cubs are just slightly out in front in terms of fastball usage and whether the rest of the league kind of catches up. That is the central question at the heart of this argument. Are the Cubs correct in saying that four-seam fastballs are now undervalued? And I got to say, the most fascinating point of this will be come playoff time where we generally see four-seam usage decrease as teams shorten the leashes on their starting pitchers and move towards more relievers. And generally those relievers throw more breaking balls. So that's going to be a fascinating question. Can this fastball strategy exist through the season? And then do we get it again in the playoffs? Where perhaps if they use a ton of four seamers, maybe they have a slight edge. As always, thanks for watching. Check out my sub stack, subscribe, like, comment if you have thoughts on this idea and whether you think it's a viable strategy long term. And thank you for watching.